there's money. Good morning, everybody. This is Shots of Info once again. This is Michael, your hot co-host, your favorite co-host. I don't know about that, but you know, I hope it is. Um, it's another day. It's December 15, 2020. The year is about to end in less than two weeks. 16 days, I think, right? What's up? 16 days. Yeah, and yeah, 16 days. Kind of crazy. 2020 is about to be over. Final chapter. Uh, just a quick disclaimer. This is just for entertainment purposes only. It's a conversation between me and Randy. Nothing being said in this podcast is should be taken too hard or too serious. So take it at, at your own discretion. Uh, but yeah, let's get it started. All right, bro. So on the topics that we have for the day, we have on the personal development, energy vampires. Mm -hmm. Does that mean? Is it actually vampires? <laughs> Stay tuned and you'll find out. Uh, on the fitness, we have what to do once you achieve your goals. And on the finance, we have apps and strategies to help manage money. Right. And then news depth at the end. Sure. So can you explain what energy vampires are? Sure. So I was the one that came up with this topic. And I heard it in passing not too long ago. And it was an interesting uh, concept. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of energy vampires is basically the people that you surround yourself with are these the kind of people that either give give you energy or take away energy from you mm -hmm. or neutral right there's people that don't do anything they're just kind of there so you want to be really diligent again we always say that you know you want to be careful about the people that you keep around or at least we should be saying that you should definitely be careful about the people that you keep around there's a saying that says that you are the average of the, what, the five closest the five. people to you right Right. So, hypothetically speaking, if that is true, then if the five people that you keep around you are people that are always asking you to do things for them, um, always expecting things to be done for them without you get, getting anything in return, essentially you just giving and not getting any value back, mm -hmm. those are people that you would consider energy vampires. Now, there's different, there's more than just that, but like that's just like the starting base where we can start off the discussion. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, yeah, but I definitely agree with that saying about, like, you know, depending on your close circle. So usually it's like the five people that you used to run with, you become the sixth. So um, it's kind of true on that. Um, but there's some balance to it as well. We can definitely talk about like how to choose your friends uh, so mm -hmm. that on the idea list, we can jump that in into a different day. But um, my, so my understanding about like energy vampires is people who drains you. So there's going to be people who like literally just texting them is kind of like a drain or just like, you know, keeping them close. It's kind of like too much drama or too much, like too much going on for you to like, you know, kind of keep track of. So it drains your energy uh, rather than, you know, uh, you pushing each other to like accomplish goals or, uh, you know, giving, um, what is it called? Like good criticism. Crit criticism. Yeah um rather than you know judging and instead of judging or you know wasting your time pretty much so there on life we come across to those persons and it's cool and whatever but you shouldn't stick around to find out how you end up for too long like cool get to know them if they drain your energy maybe it's time to cut off the time that you spend talking to them or time to you know like hang out with them because those type of people usually, you know, um, I feel like they, in some way, they kind of which is one benefit for themselves rather than help each other out as you're supposed to do as a friend. But, but yeah, I think that's my understanding yeah. about it. And that's pretty much it. And uh, it, it, the thing is, it doesn't even have to be just like friends, right? It could also yeah. be family members. It could also yeah. be people that you look up to, be old friends that you used to know back in the day, or it can be just completely new people mm -hmm. or somebody from work, a yeah, boss, coworkers. coworkers. It, it's, they're in every realm, right? They're, they're people right. that like taking value, getting value and never giving anything in return. Or they're, they're just the type of people that always have something happening, something wrong, some sort of drama. And they always try to wrap you into it. They always try to make you a part of the, the situation, which obviously shifts your focus from doing the things that you should be doing or want to be doing to right. helping them and solving their problem and whatever the case might be. 
And again, it could be anywhere. It could also be your significant other, your partner, right? A lot right. of times people get partnered up with the wrong person in such a way where they always have some issue. There's always drama and they're always draining you of energy. There's always fighting. There's always a problem mm-hmm. when there doesn't really have to be. And, you know, to a certain degree that that could come down to just the way that person was raised, right? Like that's just that's the mentality that they have. They don't really think there's anything wrong with that. And that's Maybe how they, they have operate a victim mindset. Yeah, when we talked about that before. If you have a, that victim mindset and mm-hmm. you know, you don't take ownership and responsibility for your life, then you're just gonna be throwing shit around. And if you're the one that's there, they're just gonna be throwing shit at you. And mm-hmm. if you're not diligent about being like, listen. I get where you're coming from, but this is not my problem. And you should not be throwing this, this, these issues onto me simply mm-hmm. because you don't want to deal with them or because right. you don't know how to deal with them. Just walk away. It's, listen, there, there's no need to waste this time because, you know, time is precious and you don't want to be wasting it on something that there's not going to be a resolution to it. You're not going to solve the problem. It's just going to keep piling on. There's always going to be a new problem. There's always going to be some type of problem or some issue. No, absolutely, definitely agree with that. And um, going picking back to like you know, it's not limited just to your friends. It can be all the people around you, all the you know the energies around you. Now, I'm a strong believer of like you know, people bring energy. Like we are energy in the universe. <laughs> Let's not get too too spiritual, whoa, whoa. but yeah. So whoa, the whoa. energy that you bring to the room, it's gonna be noticed, believe it or not, consciously, unconsciously, is getting noticed by the people in the room. So once you meet somebody, once you talk to somebody, or once you, you know, hang out with somebody, you're going to feel the energy. You're going to match the energy. And if the people is not matching your energy, it's time to let it go. Because um, there are times like, you know, like you hang out with somebody and regardless, like the conversation is not interesting. Let's say the conversation is kind of like just plain, like lame, like there's barely something to talk about. But you guys mm-hmm. keep in the room, like still energize, then that's a good energy. But uh, whereas like, you know, you, you're quiet and it's just awkward and it's just like weird and you're just trying to get out of there, then that's a bad energy. So like, mm-hmm. you, you, you feel it, it's something that you feel. And people like who drains your energy, like you shouldn't keep them around. You should limit the time that you spend with them or that you hang out with them because their problems is not your problem. I actually um, heard, I saw this, uh, this post, I think it was on IG that says like, you want to see all everybody you know eat but it's not your job to fix their plate you know what i mean yeah. so you can hope for the best but you know you got to be prepared for the worst and it's not your responsibility to solve everybody's problem you know you can be there you can be an example if they come to you for help obviously help them but mm-hmm. again at the end of the day it's not like you're not the one that's gonna walk in their shoes and fix their problems for them that's their responsibility and if they don't choose to do that then it is what it is. You just got to move on with your life because there's other people that are going to take responsibility. And if you surround yourself with those people, you'll be in a much better place. You'll be exactly. much happier. You won't have as much drama. You'll have more energy to do the things that you want to do. And even mm-hmm. with these people as well, or you can do things with these people because you know they, they're reliable. You know that you're going to be able to count on them. And they're, they're kind of the people that, you know, if you got stuck in a, in a situation where you're stranded, these are the people that you want with you because you know you can rely on them, not the people that are just going to sulk and have that victim mindset and, and be upset and not want to do anything. There's no point to that. You're just wasting my time. There we go. Yeah, absolutely. I think that covers it. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think? You got anything yeah, else? Yeah. I don't no, know just be really, that. really diligent about the people you keep around. Um, and that's it just and if you're the type of person that maybe you might be an energy vampire and you don't really realize it but maybe as we're talking you kind of see that like maybe you take value from people and you never give anything in return then i would suggest you know first start with that awareness and then try to literally go out of your way to start doing things for people simply because don't expect anything in return just little by little try to build that habit to like Mm -hmm. listen I don't have to always get something in return or people don't always have to do something for me. Let me just do something kind for somebody. And then little by little, you build that up over time and find that balance. Cause mm-hmm. there's always a dichotomy. There's always a dichotomy. And if you go out of the way to do too much of that, and you know, obviously people will take advantage of you and take you, um, 
What's the word I'm looking? For? Well, yeah, they'll just take advantage of you. Yeah, I was so you gonna want also not be that. Yeah, I was gonna add said that like you know like if you just give 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 regardless of your intentions like you shouldn't always expect something back but try but you you kind of want to get uh keep accountability because you don't want to exceed of the amount of things that you do uh for that pe person because like randy said they can't start taking advantage of your um of you know like that the way that you are so maybe you know that's one thing that you should be aware of like not to give too much um but you shouldn't also do it because of getting back something like instantly because remember like life karma is a bitch and what you give is going to come back sooner or later so mm -hmm. you know do things for your friends or your family and for the people that need it around you do it because you wanted to do because if you do it because just obligation or whatever it is or just because you want to you want something back then it's going to kick you in the balls sooner or later and there are people going to take advantage of you regardless. Mm -hmm. You think uh, you are a vampire energy? Energy vampire? Energy vampire? Uh, I try my best not to be. Um, there, you could probably, I mean, it depends on the person that you talk to. Maybe at some point I was, but at this point in my life, I'm really good about you know, giving back to the people that's given to me and not really expecting anything in return because they've already done so much for me, right? And for the new yeah. people in my life, you know, I give them value and then I wait to see. If they don't give me anything in return, that's not a problem. No, oh, definitely. But if I do it, you're, you're definitely not an uh, energy vampire, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. But like, let's say I give you value, value, right? I give you mm -hmm. two times, I give you something and I never, I don't get anything back. Right. And I'm like, okay, I got, I got to reassess the situation. I got to keep account of like, all right, so I'm giving this person stuff and they're not giving me anything in return. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, it's not necessarily that I want something in return, but you know, this person there, there's not this, the sense of like reciprocity. So the law of reciprocity. So that's when you give something to somebody, they feel like in this sense, like they have to pay you back because it's just fair. Right. Mm -hmm. There's not this sense of fairness when you give value to people and they don't give you anything back. Oh, definitely. I feel like I had a couple of people in my life that were energy vampires and i'm glad i cut them off because yeah i feel like now i feel more lighter like yeah. more energized regardless yeah i think i think that's actually a huge topic I, something that I didn't realize that was a thing to be honest yeah it's big man those people around you they they make or break you if you don't mm -hmm. if you have the wrong people around you you can go down a terrible path and if you have the right people you can do some amazing things so be diligent about it Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's jump right into the next topic of the day, which will be um, what to do goodness. once you achieve your goals. Yeah. So, you want to start off with this one, or I want to go? Uh, sure. I can. I can start with this one. So um, now we're talking about not, you know, like life goals, although they kind of implement to each other, but more specifically to like fitness goal. Let's say you're already lost. The amount of pounds that you wanted to lose like let's say 10 pounds and you're you know you're you're happy you're you achieved your goal what now so now should you go back to your old ways or just keep working and see what's up next so now mm -hmm. it's time to talk about like the difference between end goals and mean goals yeah end goals and mean that, goals. that works yeah <laughs> so so what do you accomplish right now? You know, probably was a goal back, you know, at two or three months ago to lose 10 pounds. But trust me, at this point, you're going to have a new goal. And that goal, it's going to, you know, kind of going to push you to do something better. So let's say now that you lost 10 pounds, you want to, um, you know, get, you know, what do you call that tonality? Form your body. Toned, ripped, yeah, there you shredded. Go. Your body. So maybe that's your next goal. And you had to you, you're gonna keep up you're gonna keep working towards it so now once you get to that you're gonna come up with a new goal maybe now is to get it stronger and so on forth so now ultimately all of these little ones are and are what we call mean goals the end goals all should uh, always should be to be fit you know be fit and healthy stay strong and live long <laughs> that, that right oh, but yeah 
that's that's probably that's definitely your end goal. So your end goal definitely should be to be fit and healthy rather than you know a specific one. Everything else uh, aside of that, it should be just a means to an end. So a mean goal. Mm -hmm. So the ten pounds, the getting toned, the getting stronger, uh, maybe improving your cardio. All of these are going to be mean goals. So you should mm -hmm. um, definitely take in account of them. There are definitely some motiv motivational pushers, but ultimately you always want to look at the bigger picture. What would be your end goal to be and remain fit and healthy? That's yep. my opinion. No, I like it. It works pretty well. Um, so yeah, that mean goal and end goal. So that's the thing. A lot of people, they, they get to those mean goals and they think that's it, right? Mm -hmm. And only it's only once you get to the end there where you start reassessing like, okay, well, I got to this part. What else is next? Because, you know, now you got that out of your mind and you can push forward and start accomplishing new goals, right? Because you're lighter. So maybe you can, you know, your main goal now is maybe I want to start doing some pull-ups. So I'll build up the strength to start doing some pull-ups because I've never been able to do that before or doing multiple push-ups. But at every stage, what you should always be taking into account is that, again, you have to be a... Um, you have to be focused on the big picture just because sometimes it can get really easy to get lost in the weeds and get lost in the numbers and just, like doing the same thing, doing the same repetition and getting bored of it and not really feeling that energy and that motivation to do something. Mm -hmm. So you can focus on, you know, specific metrics like that, like, you know, getting stronger, being toned, build, uh, getting abs, whatever the case might be. But another way you can go about those mean goals is to set up events for yourself. So hypothetically, let's say um, your goal initially was to lose weight. You did that. And one of the things that you picked up was running. Okay, great. So now what you can do is take that running skill that you just acquired or the running skill that you improved because most people know how to run. Mm -hmm. Maybe take that into an event. So maybe in this time now, you're, you're, the plan is to run a 5K or mm -hmm. run a marathon or do some sort of uh, triathlon, right? Biking, swimming, uh, running. And these little goals, or rather these mean goals, right? They force you to prepare for them in such a way where you're obviously gonna have to get more conditioned. You're obviously gonna have to get stronger. You're gonna have to build out your body better in order to get to that goal and achieve it, right? So you can do it like that. That way you're not stuck in just the board, I wouldn't say boredom, but the mundane aspect of just working out and doing the same exercises and not really seeing any kind of big end goal result. Because again, if the end result is just to be healthy and fit, that can get pretty boring, right? Like, okay, well, I mean, I can do that just doing the bare minimum, mm -hmm. but you always want to be pushing yourself. So I would say one of those big things is maybe start looking for events and things that you can do picking up new skills and hobbies that are related to athleticism and sports. That way you're constantly moving. You're constantly needing to improve in order to be, perform better at these things, as opposed to just, you know, working out for the sake of working out. Which don't get me wrong. People do that all the time and it's fun, especially if you're the type of person that's competitive with your lifting. Right. So those were, you get those power lifters or those uh, bodybuilders, you know, there was, they can compete in shows, bodybuilding shows. So they, they always have that motivation to always be better simply because they're competing. And that's one of the things that you should always try to also incorporate into your fitness, some form of competition. Because competition, whether you like it or not, it's a really strong motivator for most people. Wanting to win. And we've talked about this before, right? You want to win. And if you put yourself in that situation, whether or not you win or not, the fact that you're competing and you're forcing yourself to become better by the act of competing that's going to put you far ahead of most people. And obviously it's going to be a good motivator. So you'll always be working out, staying mm -hmm. healthy and fit, which again, that's the big picture. And that's no, it. Definitely. I, know, I completely agree with you. Um, so once you, you know, accomplish something better or something, definitely take it uh, to some event. Definitely like, for example, if you want to, if you're lighter, if you're more fit, you can do boxing. That's something that I should do some my plans as I move forward. Mm -hmm. um, not but well, kickbox, well, kickboxing, yeah. Uh, martial, boxing, kickboxing, and martial yeah. arts that's a martial perfect arts. thing to like do, also. You know, I want to I wanna try it for like a couple months, I want to learn a little bit more. So, that's something that I, you know, I'm aiming for uh, in, the, in the future, the new future, maybe 2021 will be the year, depends. 
Um, but yeah, definitely take it uh, into like some some sort of event. I agree with that. It keeps you motivated and it keeps you, I think it's enjoyable. Like, you know, the aspect of all your accomplishment mm-hmm. that you have done, marathons, um, what else there is, like competitions, stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Hypothetically, let's say you pick up boxing, right? Mm-hmm. You like you start going to boxing and you know you're you're working out, but you're also doing boxing. And maybe there's there's always a competitive nature to the boxing because you're always mm-hmm. sparring with people. But hypothetically, let's say you're actually pretty good, and you know, the coach tells you, you know what, if you're down for it, you can start doing some competitions for the gym. Boom. It all starts trickling down. So now your training is going to, you know, directly affect the way you're gonna compete in your competitions. Yeah, no, absolutely future um the guy that we saw the video yesterday paul logan mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, logan paul oh no 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 what's jake paul jake paul, jake that's paul, jake paul yeah. my guy was talking trash but anyways let's jump into the last segment of the day which is uh finance just not to make it this too long mm-hmm. uh so in finance we have apps and the strategies to manage money now uh this kind of piggybacking from yesterday we talk about food apps so now let's talk about money apps what apps can mm-hmm. help us, you know, this is specific, specifically to help track money rather than invest and trade. What do you think? Right. For example, so I, yeah, go ahead. I, so I would say that one of the things is that I'm really diligent about my money. So I don't really need to use apps to track it. Like I'm really good about meticulously organizing my money in such a way where like, this is my spending money. This is my saving money. This is my investing money. This is my trading money. And that's it. But Obviously, like that came about because that's a skill I've acquired as I got older. Like, yeah. I started saving money when I was like eight years old. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, there's a lot, a lot of people that haven't done that and haven't acquired that skill. And again, it's a skill. So mm-hmm. if you don't have it, then using apps is definitely something that you could definitely use. To start building that habit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So similarly, like Randy, I, I'm very diligent with my money. I actually create my own spreadsheets to like monthly expenses and stuff like that. Um, maybe something that I can, you know, develop for everybody later on. Clean it up a little bit, of course. Mm-hmm. That's actually one of my projects for this podcast and for my portfolio as well. But, you know, I'm very diligent on that aspect. I have the, you know, the money that I, I have to spend, the money that I'm getting uh, or expect to get. And then the money that I lend or I own, all right? So that's very easy to track. But now when it comes to apps, I do use one, which is very, very nice, very helpful. It's called Mint, M-I-N-T, Mint app. It's really good, really well done app, really well um, all together, like all, all well put together. I mean, <laughs> they has, uh, you can add your credit cards, you can add your uh, debit card so it keeps track of the of the spending and it gives you it, what i like about it is that it gives you the section that you spend most of the money for example with it whether it's transportation education groceries and stuff like that so it really ca- categorizes your money very well like really nicely um and also like gives you like an average of how much you're spending if it's average for you to spend uh this amount of money i've been using it for so long since i since i was like since I, ever since ever since I got a credit card, I've been using it. So the longer you use, it actually compares your data with uh, previous years. So it says like on this month, last year, you spent this amount of money, this amount of money. It's really good. It's really helpful. Uh, also keeps you track of your credit score, which I like. It usually sends you like a little update. Um, you know, your credit card went up, went down. And it gives you a summary monthly or weekly about how much you're spending, how much you own and uh, the bills that you have coming for for credit card. Usually for my bills, I have it as a auto pay, you know, like it pays it on itself. So I don't really have to mm. worry about that, but it's really helpful like for those that it's have multiple credit cards and can keep track of like the the, um, the deadlines. Well, the, you know, when you have to pay, it mm. helps you track those down. Um, definitely, 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 definitely encourage you to look into it. I like it. Like I said, I'm very diligent with my money, but that little extra help, it definitely keeps me a little bit more accountable about what where I'm spending and how much I spend, how much money I'm getting each month. So mm-hmm. other than that, now that's the only app that I use, the app in my spreadsheet, to be honest. So the last thing that I would add to that, you know, obviously build out that skill, use apps like that, like Mint, and also the cash thing that we talked about before, carry mm-hmm. cash. Because cash 
will always show you that, hey, I'm spending either way too much or I have enough to spend simply because you have the money in your pocket. But mm -hmm. when it's all coming out of a bank account and it's all a credit card, you have an infinite amount of, you have an infinite pool to just pull out until you obviously run out of credit. But if you have cash, that right there is going mm -hmm. to solidify, like, this is the amount of money that I have. Yep. I shouldn't, I can't spend anything more than that. Or at least that's hopefully the process, that, the thought process that you have. So definitely cash if you can, if not even if, try to carry cash as much as you can. Obviously not too much, just in case, you know, you lose your wallet or something, mm -hmm. but just enough to, you have spending money. I'm very, I'm very modern on that aspect. I actually hate carrying cash. Like for me to carry cash is very, very uh, odd. Mm. Uh, and when I do, I usually carry big bills, like 50, 100, because it hurts my soul when I break them apart. Mm. Uh, but yeah. That's another thing you can do, right? Carry big uh, big bills. That way, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to just depart from them. Right. Yeah, but, you know, time to time, bro, like Randy Big in there, like I ask you for cash. With whatever we go to like a restaurant, there's cash only. I'll be like, yo, can I own you a quick figure really quick. It's not because I don't have money. It's because I just don't carry cash. Like I get paid, you know, um, direct deposit. So for me to go to the bank and take it out, it's just literally taking my time away. Like I would spend like an, half an hour just going to the bank. So for me, it's not, it's not worth it, in my opinion. That's the only reason I don't have cash. So I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> usually this happens like a lot, but nah. That is what it is. But I feel yeah. like those are some good strategies. And, as long as you, app, you know, you're diligent, whatever your strategy, I feel like you just get to know yourself analyze your spending habits see what you do how you buy it and depending on that take the approach that you know it's best fit for you regarding your money management but in my opinion mint is definitely one of the best apps out there to control your cat i mean to be accountable of what you're doing of where you're spending your money uh, the only downside of mint i would say that uh, it doesn't mean, like it, you can add your portfolios, like your investment portfolios and, you know, keep track of that as well to give you like your network, net worth, but uh, Mint is not linked to Robinhood. So um, that's the only downside that I have seen so far. Uh, Webull, I usually try to keep away from it, like because Webull is just my trade up. So I, I don't really consider it, you know, my money, like I can do it anytime. So it's your money that I can have the... Um, Oh, another thing too, they always trying to get you sign up on credit cards. So it's a little bit annoying. You every like that. If you don't have, if you only use the free version, it's going to have ads about like, oh, this is the best card for you. Blah, blah, blah. Maybe it's good for somebody like, you know, if you don't have a credit card and you're trying to apply for something, it kind of compares it really nicely. But, you know, I, I would suggest not just relying on what Mint says because, you know, they're getting paid for it. So definitely do your own research before you open a new credit card. But yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that covers that. Absolutely. Let's uh, finish up with some news updates and wrap it up so we're not talking for too long. Very good. I like that. Sweet. Any news updates on your end? Uh, not particularly. Everything is pretty, it's pretty much like yesterday. It's pretty stable. Everything's trending up again, which is mm -hmm. cool. You know, we got some positive news. We're looking... I believe uh, there's a solidification of the fact that Joe Biden won the presidency. Right. He uh, officially won. Right. But with the electoral vote. So, you know, that just kind of gives us a little bit more stability. We're not, you know, just waiting to see what's going to happen. Right. Uh, we're going into 2021 now. So, you know, everything's looking up. Hopefully we can continue on this trend. Absolutely. Hopefully we do, because we've been down for four straight days. Since Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, since mm -hmm. Wednesday, we've been on red. Um, now, on my end, I do have a few couple, couple news. So, uh, let me find it. Oh, yeah. So, oil. Oil has a, you know, they met, I think it was last week. They set some new prices, new targets, and new goals. So by 2025, they're aiming to reduce overall emission intensity by 15% to 20%, half methane emissions intensity. So very good. They're definitely trying to go green. Um, it's kind of crazy because, you know, their business is based on oil. But we'll see how that goes. So that has been staying a strong good news. Uh, they also cut off the, um, the um, what is it called? 
the development, well, the crude oil, so they're not, they're limiting the amount of crude oil putting out mm -hmm. in the market. So that keeps the prices a little bit uh, stable because it's been uh, dropping. If you go to your gas station, you're going to see that gas is a little bit cheaper than it was a few months ago or uh, last year because, you know, simple economics, supply and demand. Supply too much supply. Yeah, it was too much supplied, less demand because everybody's staying home. But yeah, so um, uh, other than that, we do have, well, Joe Biden is going to get elected on uh, January 20th. So that's going to be the first, the, the, well, the first day that he gets get elected. And he pledged to rejoin the Paris Accord on day one and invest two trillion in clean energy and get the US on the path to net zero carbon emissions no later than 2050. Is it is it is it, um what is it called like um oh, I forget the name. Is it really ambitious? Ambitious. Thank you. A very very ambitious uh um ambitious plan. Will we see how that turns out? It might get some backslash from there, uh, from especially from the Republican Party. But we will see. And and companies that you know are literally based on oil. Cool. Now it's a bittersweet day yesterday. Um, NYC area nurse Sandra Lindsay became the first American vaccine against COVID-19 outside the clinical trials. Three million more doses of Pfizer Biotech vaccines will be delivered across the country this week. Now it's kind of interesting that they, the first woman that got vaccine was a black woman. Mm -hmm. Make the conclusions that you want to make, but yeah. So probably the first persons getting the vaccines are going to be minorities just because, you know. <clears throat> really? That's a thing? I'm pretty sure, bro. Oh, shit. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know. With the politics, I mean, there's, there's always... Some, you know, there's, you never try something that is just on the first, in the first round. Mm. It's like, there's not much, uh, you know, numbers are just there. The statistics are just there. There's nothing set in stone until like the actual we actually get to see what is happening. And right at this point, we're gonna kind of wait and see what's gonna happen. Yeah. So more than three hundred thousand Americans have died from COVID nineteen. The U.S. averaging around two hundred thousand new cases a day, and three thousand plus deaths. Yesterday's NYC mayor told the city to prepare for a potential full shutdown. The city halted indoors dining as of yesterday, but we will keep but we'll keep schools opened. And oh, going back to this, um, there was a situation of a data scientist who in Florida, who like literally the police went into her house and like with guns like at gunpoint, just because the mayor of Florida has been uh, hiding data, like giving uh, wrong statistics about like you mm. know like the, the new cases and the and the debt just so they can open back dining and stuff like that earlier and this data scientist was um communicating with somebody on their health department and they were you know they were kind of like telling her like you know don't unconfidential but all they did was they just went for her phone just to see who was the snitch but yeah like things are cra getting crazy you know politics and stuff Bro, it's crazy. We live in a crazy Maybe world. not. Maybe we thought we were on an uptrend, but this is just the beginning of the end again. I'm telling you, it's the final chapter of 2020. But yeah, other than that, um, bottom line, blah, blah, blah. Let me see. I saw something. Oh, Pornhub. <laughs> Pornhub, Pornhub is going to be deleting number five videos as of MasterCard. I think it was MasterCard who... Um, I think, I don't know if it was a lawsuit or something that they, oh, there you go, MasterCard, which processes payments on the site, launch an investigation. So they were, you know, they process the payment, of course, mm -hmm. but they didn't want to move on if there was some type of infest and rape videos on Pornhub. So, ouch. So now, you know, Pornhub is being more strict about like the videos that they, uh, show and stuff like that and efforts to remove illegal content has been largely effective but fail to convince the powerful payment processors whose decisions could lead to major changes 
in porn industry. Believe it or not, porn industry is huge. Oh, it's one of the biggest things out there. Yeah. Now, uh, Amazon unveiled its ultimate writing mas- machine. I don't know if you saw. It's kind of funny looking, kind of adorable, kind of like mm-hmm. a mini, mini van. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, Amazon Zooks unveiled its first its first electric robot taxi, in its push to eliminate awkward small talk in Uber forever. Here's what under the hood. It's driverless. In fact, the bail code doesn't even have a steering wheel or pedals. It's safe. In the event of a crash, airbags uh, envelop individual passengers to prevent any painful knee knocking in the four person cabin. It's fastish, topping out uh, 70 files, 75 miles per hour. It's a speediest robot taxi in the industry. So, really cool. Uh, Amazon is also another competitor on the um, you know, EV market. So, we will see how that turns out. But yeah, oh, cool, other than cool. that, I don't have anything. I need to stop saying other than that before I shoot myself. But yeah. So yeah, other than that, we're good. <laughs> I think that concludes the show for the day. Um, so okay. yeah, thank you for listening, everybody. Um, that's it. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. This is. Peace.